Ah uh, yes, the Kyosho Mini Z 4x4, the MX. This is the Jimny. Now, viewers of the show that have been on this channel for a while have seen me wheel this on my indoor trail park, and I gotta tell you, it is a lot of fun. But this uh, size on the screen here, don't let it fool you, these tires are ludicrously small. In fact, the only tires I've seen like them before are or smaller ones are on something called the Orlando. Look at this, this is a normal Axial SCX24 tire for the Dingo. You can see how much of a difference there is on these two tires. And you can see that on a backyard or indoor or whatever kind of course you have that may have dirt or sand or whatever, anything loose, tires like this that don't have a lot of grip there, they are actually going to have an insane problem trying to get any kind of traction, right? So although I removed the bumpers and the clearance is much better, I think we should make some efforts and change this into a monster Kyosho Jimny. <laughs> All right, so the upgrades include, look at this, these are the always hard to find hot racing uh, dampers for the SCX24. Now that's an axial model, that's the 124 scale model uh, like the Dingo I showed in the opening shot there. Uh, these are very popular shocks, you can fill them with oil, they do have multiple sets of springs, they are a good shock. Can you use the stock uh, shocks for what we're doing today? Uh, not with my application because I went onto eBay and searched out a 3D printer uh, that actually was doing some micro printing that printed out some uh, upper and lower shock hangers. So this one right here is the top part of the hanger. So it's gonna be uh, you know fitting with that top screw there as well as this is the bottom because the uh, Kyosho actually has a different mount. You can't quite see it there but it's two screws on the bottom uh, as well as a Phillips screw up in the top so there's going to be one screw that mounts the shock in here and then a screw on top of that that will mount it onto the uh, existing frame now if we move over the next thing we're going to need is these uh, conversion pieces these are hex adapter con uh, conversions for the uh, Kyosho Mini Z tire let me see if I can get that back in focus sorry about that uh, it's kind of hard to see there unless it's on an angle. Let's see if I can get it in shot for you right there. So now you can see the spline system. This is exactly how a Kyosho uh, actually works. Look at this. Here this is on the side. If you guys have never seen this tire before or the way this one works, it's not your standard hex bit. Ah, it's so small it's hard to zoom in on it. But there it is right there. So the back of a tire is generally the same thing. It's got that weird looking little hex in there. So for us to put a normal uh, hex adapter on there for any tire to fit, we have to put on one of these little adapters, okay? So that makes more sense. And what is the last one we need to look at? Ba boom I went and got some CR18 one inch grabber tires on uh, little bead locks here. Yes, they're, they're just a, a two part system uh, that have four screws in the back, but these tires are massive. Look at this, you can see the hex adapter in the back, that's why I needed those adapters, plus the screws that pinch them together. Loving this, because these are grabber tires, and oh, look at this. This small tire comes off of the Jimny. Look at the tire on the Forerunner, as always. Well, that's going to flop over. It's small. The Forerunner had absolute terrible tires as well, just no traction. But then, ba 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 ba, I went this way instead, gave it some massive tires. And then when lockdown is over and Lyle and everybody can get back together, I am going to run this truck in competition. That's why we're doing this truck for you guys here today. Why not? We might as well uh, make it into a monster. We have the means to do it. Well, let's take the body off of this. That way we can get right to the shocks and remove all four of the shocks just using a normal Phillips screwdriver. When I remove the top of the shock, I am going to need this screw right here still. And you can leave the two screws in the bottom mounted in the axle housing itself. Okay, I'll just cut into the hot racing shocks. Inside these shocks will come uh, another set of screws. 
They're very, very small. You have to use them uh, for these shocks because the top eyelets here are very small holes. So these screws are essential and you need them for the set that I'm using anyway. Now it's true, these uh, actually come with very firm springs, but not too bad in my opinion. Uh, for the weight of the Kyosho Mini Z, I think these are perfect for the tires I'm gonna be using. They also come with these softer springs uh, for different models of vehicle, whatever the suspension setup you want is. So what I'm gonna do is just basically uh, get this uh, lined up. This is going to be, whoa, there we go. This on the lower hole is where I'm going to stick the top uh, hoop of the shock and then on the bottom there's the hanger now you got to be careful with the direction of this hanger but it depends on where you print it or how you print it or whatever this will actually lift it up quite a bit so we're just going to drop that in on this side in its stock location of course using remember when I was talking about needing that uh, top screw this is well you'll need that replacement screw again just to go back up here and then just make sure that all four corners move freely uh, when you get it all done and I've already installed these uh, little adapters all they do is they just kind of click on to the original uh, axles like that Ta -da. and then huge tires because now I should have more than enough uh, body clearance plus these huge tires themselves uh, <laughs> will jack this truck way up yeah okay so here's a hint if you guys got the same tires as I do you have to go in here and tighten these up almost a full turn but don't strip them out maybe I'm gonna say that one was three quarters of a turn. If you don't do this in your front steering area, you're gonna have binding and you'll think it's cause your uh, suspension is lifted too high, but that is not it. You're just rubbing these inside screws. The other thing you'll need to do if you're using these tires is you see those little bumps on the inside right beside the screw, like that one above my thumbnail there and that one and there's four of them you'll have to take a razor and shave out the, the you know the first third of that um, which is right down to where the screws are or again you're just going to get rubbing right there but it's not a big deal cuts out very easy all right once the tires are on there make sure again you can get some movement but look at this see that i'm going to push this forward off to the side look at that that is because of the change in the suspension height. So what's happening is because the servo is lifted higher, that steering rod is shorter. So what you have to do is unscrew it on both sides to lengthen it a little bit more. I would say by about, you know, uh, just under a quarter inch. All right, that is adjusted now, looking good. Everything is moving free. Oh, it's not. I got a little chunking happening in this front axle right here. So I'm going to take it off and make sure that everything is smooth on the inside there. Yeah, you'd think that that was actually having to do with the um, drive shaft angle, but it's not. The chunking is still there even when you lower it to stock. So I know that that's rubbing on the inside. Once I have that adjusted, you can see all the way around. There's no rubbage. Good to go. Yep, guilty as charged. I have already been playing with it, but wouldn't you if you had a vehicle that looked like that? What a huge difference from what we started with, hey? Now I had to hack and slash the body, but just like in full size, if you're going to put 40 series plus tires on a uh, Jimny, those stock wheel wells were never going to fit it anyway. But look at that. Now this is going to be a way more capable machine. In fact, there is my forerunner. Look at this. You'd think this would be rubbing in the back. It does not. You'd think this would be rubbing, but it does not. This has great wheel wells. You can see they're lifted and up out of the way. Look how wide it is now, guys. 
insane compared to what it was before. In fact, let's get the Axial STX24. If you guys are interested in these because they're inexpensive, they're very, very good, and they last a long time. They come with a LiPo. I'll leave a link in the video description box below the video player. Uh, they're like 130 US or less. I've seen them for 119 at the same link I'm posting below, so hopefully you can find it for that. Uh, and a whole bunch of trucks just like this. The Kyosho's, on the other hand, about $300. Very expensive but a hard body lots of different things but let's look at the tires okay now we're looking at this going hmm they're almost the same but in fact the axial dingo tire is slightly smaller than what we have on the Jimny. indeed making this into a monster uh Jimny. now you guys will see me use more of the forerunner in the upcoming videos but let's see this Jimny actually do something okay I'm not usually driving with my right hand and filming with the left, so let's kind of change it around here. Hello, here is a rock I could not even really approach before. Now it's easy. There's no added weight in this at all. It just easily climbs over it. Here, let's just back it up a little bit here. Look, at there's the stock tire on the back compared to what's on there now. That should give you an idea of what the heck's going on here. Let's go to these rocks I just brought back with me. Do, 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 do. I was away on a trip recently. I'm back now. Brought these little rocks. These would be great for climbing, I thought, on the trail. Beautiful. No hesitation at all on the Kyosho side. It just wants to eat the rocks and go. The wide stance giving me definitely a competitive edge now with the Axial SCX24s. So here you go, guys. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. You know I love to read your comments. Uh, if you have any hints or tips or tricks, or if you want to love this, uh, give me a, a great like click. That would be great. If you hate it, oh, or want to judge my driving, go ahead. Good or bad, it doesn't matter to me. I think all, our, all RC in all avenues is fun. When you can stay inside and have fun with RC, I think that is a magical thing in itself. And my friends, as always, like I say, go and have some fun. That is what life is about. If you're able to do that at home right now, right on if you can order a couple of these do that because then you can have some excitement it doesn't matter what you're crawling you don't need indoor dirt you could be crawling the pillows on the couch you could be in the basement you could be doing a lego whole thing you know it doesn't matter that's the whole thing with this hobby imagination sharing it openly having fun respecting one another look at this hey doing something together if you can't wheel outdoors, you might as well wheel indoors. Yeah. All right, guys. Here you go. Here's another episode you can watch right now.